All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go an article entitled, I'm having an affair at 70 years old, and it's the best you-know-what of my life. It was the last thing she expected, but after 25 years of marriage to a man she still loves, one woman reveals how she fell for the charms of a philandering cad. And like the article says, guys, this, 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 article, this article is going to show that the, the carousel writing never stops, even at 70 years old. And this is about a woman who has been married for 25 years, and she'll describe her marriage as happy and content and uh, all that. She's perfectly faithful. But then she meets some dude who's literally like a 60-year-old version of a Chatter Tyrone, and one way or another, a bad boy, sweeps her off her feet. Next thing you know, she's having an affair with this guy. Even though she's been married for 25 years and her husband's really good to her and all that, the carousel never stops. And, and you're going to see how she writes this, guys. She doesn't care. She, she, she justifies her actions. You're going to see this. And she writes the story almost like the way you would see one of those trashy romance novels or romance type of movies going on. No joke. And by the way, I don't care what any woman says. By Absolutely by and large, most women at least one time in their life has read one of those stupid romance books you might see at, like in the, the magazine aisle and CVS or something like that, or Walgreens, you know what I'm talking about there, at least once. And some many a times, especially more, you know, naughty fiction, so to speak. And a lot of women, that's what they're trying to find. They want that kind of romance story, that forbidden love, that bullshit, you know? And you're going to see how she writes it like that. Seven years old, she doesn't give a shit. So I'm going to get into this, guys. You're going to see a little bit more what I'm talking about. So it starts off, For 25 years, I was perfectly faithful to my husband. We met when I was in my mid-40s and don't have any children, but are happy and content with one another. Well, obviously, she's not that happy. Otherwise, she wouldn't have so easily been seduced by the 60-something-year-old Chatter Tyrone. Having an affair was the last thing I thought I would do at, any, at, at my age. I was completely off my guard by the sudden strength of my feelings. Oh, it's not my fault. Blame my feelings. Guys, it's always about the feelings with the ladies. Okay, well, not, we will not call them ladies, but you know what I mean about the women. You know, they, 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 have, they feel a certain way, and they use that to justify their actions for better or for worse. It was only a few weeks after my 70th birthday, on a cold February night, that I got invited to an art exhibition of paintings. I was unsure whether I wanted to go. It was a colleague from the art... Uh, I, it was a colleague... From the art world rather than a close friend but it was her first solo exhibition and i wanted to support her i was introduced to a small group of people one man and two women the women asked questions about my life as a professional potter but when the man tried to make conversation i told him i wanted to look at the art and moved on later on the train home i saw him and, and decided to say hello to brighten up the boring journey aha uh -huh, and here we go Surprisingly, we engaged almost immediately and had a very amusing and reciprocal conversation. I can't believe it was only about 10 minutes as we managed to pack it in so much. Well, he's going to be packing in so much pretty soon. When we stepped off at the same station, we exchanged names. He, his was Nick, and I thought no more of it. I didn't clock that he was a particularly attractive man, more that he was a good conversationalist and funny. Guys... As if you haven't figured this out before, women love guys and make them laugh. I don't mean guys acting goofy like a clown or something, but actually guys that are witty and can make them laugh because it makes them feel good and they'll associate those feel-good feelings with the dude. For you relationship types of guys, want to know that if you can make them laugh, you're you definitely you gotta have other other qualities, but if you can make them laugh, not in a stupid goofy way, that's a big help. And what and it helped this guy. We talk about most we talk mostly about books and a little about football. It was hardly a brief encounter. <clears throat> I didn't think any more of it until the next day. He had obviously gone to my website and looked up my email. He said he hoped I didn't mind, but he very much liked my work and wanted to continue our conversation about books because he was starting a book group himself. Yeah, that's why he reached out to her, just because of like he liked her work and about books. Sure, dude. And by the way, I guarantee you he saw a ring on her finger, unless, of course, maybe she was hiding that ring on her finger. Let's see? A 60-something-year-old uh, Chatter Tyrone. They don't stop either, guys. The carousel never stops, and the Chad and Tyrones are being Chad and Tyrone to the day they die. He suggested we meet a local coffee house, dropping into the conversation 
that it was where he often met his daughter for a coffee. I had managed during that 10 minutes in the train to mention I had a husband. Nick later said that women who want affairs let you know they have a husband. Well, I didn't know that at the time. Compared to all the young hipsters in the coffee house, he definitely looked like an older, not especially handsome man. <laughs> he was Irish, quite thick-set, intelligent, with a face that struck me as shrewd. He's shrewd, all right. He did have rather sexy lips and dress well, as you'd expect from his job as creative director of an ad agency. He told me he had recently left his wife of 32 years and was living at the top of a friend's house, but was already searching for someone else to live. I sensed he was lonely and perhaps a bit rootless. What was a man of his age looking for a flat to share? But I wasn't into criticizing and concentrating on having enjoyable coffee. Translation, she's wondering, wait a second here. This guy is his age. Why is he looking for someone to share a place to live with? Shouldn't he have some money? They're always factoring that in, guys. I must have said something about how he would have some money to put to buy a place when the, when the marital home was sold and he said he wasn't going to sell, that his wife could stay in the house. I realized he was younger than me and we had, uh, had different reference points for the things we like in music. He was 64. I'm used to younger men. Younger men. My husband, Tom, who's a teacher, is 11 years younger, but I did slightly fudge my age and told him that I was in my late 60s. Women always lie about their age, guys. When they're younger, they're going to say they're older. When they're older, they're going to say they're younger. And weight and other things. Probably we spent no more than an hour together, I suppose. Uh, together, I suppose, if I'm honest, there was already some mutual attraction, but neither of us were acting on it. We met again about three weeks later and then didn't see one another for a couple months. We went back and forth a bit with emails. I recommended a book for his book club. He wrote a review about it and sent it to me. She knows what she's doing. She knows she's attracted to this guy. She can see where this is going, okay? If she if she truly was loyal to her husband, maybe she would have chit-chatted with the guy on the train, and then that would be the end of it. Or if the guy reached out to her, she would have stopped it and could see where it was going. So it's like, okay, we've been married 25 years. All right, I get a hall pass. Now, if uh, her husband was doing something like this, how do you think she'd feel, right? She doesn't give a shit. <clears throat> At some point, he said it would be good to meet again, and we arranged lunch. I don't usually drink at lunchtime unless it's a celebration of some sort, but I did on this occasion. Yeah, because she can drink, and then whatever may happen, blame on the alcohol, as it always is. He told me he left his wife for someone else, but he didn't live with this other woman because she had a daughter who didn't like him staying the night. I wasn't disappointed because, consciously at least, I wasn't expecting this to go further. Sure, lady. The conversation took to intimate turn. He told me about one of his affairs and went on to admit he had several during the course of his marriage. So he's not hiding who he is. He has affairs. He's a cheater, and she uh, and obviously, as this, uh, you know, women women like guys are attract are popular and, and and popular with other women that other women find attractive and a surprise. So already right then and there, it'll show that he knows what he's doing. He's popular with women, and that and that, that will pique her interest. His private life was clearly complicated and he wasn't yet divorced. I told him a little about my S-word adventures before I settled down with Tom. So she's talking about intimate stuff with this guy. And again, they're supposed to be uh, just uh, a friend meeting up for lunch, right? You see how this just gets escalated up a notch every single time? That's how these using movies and romance novels go. You know, they meet somebody and there's chemistry and they go back and forth and it escalates a little bit every time. And then... The dirty deed happens, and then it goes from there. It takes a life of its own. After all this, I randomly said, just to change the subject, really, that I enjoyed visiting churches, and he said, let's go visiting churches for the day together. I said, I wasn't sure my husband would like me going for a day visiting churches with a man I didn't really know. So he said, it's not like we're going to have you-know-what. Things were clearly moving in a certain direction, but I wasn't willing to acknowledge it to myself yet. The next time we met, he was waiting for me in the pub with a glass of wine. He was wearing a white jacket and looked great. A few sentence, in a few sentences, he said, So how often do you have you-know-what? I guarantee you she's going to probably act shocked, but loves the fact that he's daring and doesn't give a crap. Part of the charm of the bad boy. 
I didn't answer. I somehow brushed it off because the truth was hardly at that stage in my, it was hardly at that stage in my relationship with Tom. So husband's in the 60s, she's 70 years old, they're not hooking up very much, but she still wants to feel desired, attractive, all that. And that will be justified in, as you will see pretty soon, guys. Then things started to happen. We were holding each other's hands and massaging them, and I can honestly say I've never felt anything quite so sexy. He asked if we could kiss, and I said no. See how this is escalating? We did, we did, uh, we did do the day visiting churches and churchyards. We were in the car, in the car park, and he turned my chin and said, My God, you're pretty. Honestly, it was like something from a B movie, but it certainly did the trick. At one point, he said, Come on, let's admit it, we fancy one another. After the churchyard, we went for a drink and a light meal and back to his room for a cup of tea. We didn't have you-know-what, but we did frolic on the bed like teenagers, and I definitely liked it. See how this just escalates and escalates and escalates, just like the romance novel, just like the movies. And this guy doesn't give a crap that she's married, and obviously she doesn't give a crap because she's using her feelings... And obviously the, the fact that I've been married 25 years and I haven't never strayed, so I get a hall pass. And again, what would happen if her guy did this? You think that would go over very well? It continues. Essentially, it was a slow seduction and, what, and one that I allowed. More emails and texts followed. He told me he couldn't stop thinking about me, and when I said the whole thing was was foolhardy, he countered with, yes, but life enhancing, life short at our age. The truth is, I couldn't stop thinking about him either, and I admit the delaying of the gratification was part of the excitement. See, it's uh, the building it up, building it up, building it up. That's how it works. I'm not justifying this, I'm just telling you how it goes. The affair probably should have lasted three or four months, but it had been going on for almost three years now. Three years she's having an affair with this dude. Meanwhile, her husband has no idea. I'm going I'm to assume he has no idea. That's the thanks that she gives her husband of 25 years of loyalty and treating her well and taking care of her and all that. Real nice, huh? And I guarantee you there'll be women that would hear this story and say, she deserves that. She deserves that because he obviously wasn't making her feel loved or special or wanted. Or life is short. Or you never know when your number's up. Something like that. Guaranteed. It says, uh, after the few months, it became more difficult because my sense of betraying Tom felt more acute. Also, Nick is a tricky, if charismatic, character. Huh, imagine that. The bad boy she's having the affair with, the guy, the, the senior bad boy, is tricky and a charismatic character. That's part of the charm, the charisma and tricky and never knowing what he's going to do next. Never knowing what he's going to say next. And her always wondering where she stands with him. The same crap works on women, whether they are teenagers in college or their 70s. It doesn't make a difference. The age, the background, they're all the same. And so, if you guys are into pickup and hooking up and all that, if you understand this really well, once you master it, you have you got it made. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not justifying this guy's actions. I think this guy's an asshole. The fact that he uh, knows that she's married and doing this, but I'm just telling you how they operate. Watch out for these types, guys, for those of you who do relationships or earn marriages. And, of course, there was the woman he had supposedly left his wife for. Oh, hang on, let me backtrack here. After she said he's a tricky and charismatic character, listen to this. He told me that he was in debt and he had a drinking problem in the past. Ah, the charismatic guy, the charismatic bad boy who has money problems and had a drinking problem in the past. You want to talk about cliche here, and yet she's still drawn to the guy. Hey, a fixer-upper. And of course, there was the woman he had supposedly left his wife for, whom he admitted he was seeing infrequently. But the you-know-what was brilliant, and I wasn't expecting to be having brilliant you-know-what at 70 years old. There was a very brief moment, probably about three weeks after we started having you-know-what, that I thought I could leave Tom for him. Right there. So caught up with her emotions, so caught up with the whole like you know romance novel BS that she's thinking about leaving her husband for this guy. And to be honest with you, that that she should have done that. That would have been a better thing to this guy. It'd be better for her to end it with her husband than to keep having an affair and let him think everything's cool. But I gotta wonder what the husband's thinking if she's always out and about somewhere and he has you know like where the hell are you going? But 
Women can be extremely crafty and devious when it comes to the cheating. She says, I was on cloud nine at that point. I wrote to my best friend, told her that I'd never been happier in my entire life. Like I told you, women can't keep secrets. I was on a sexual high. I saw myself in the mirror and I was bright eyed and vibrant and shiny haired. Another friend said, you're zinging. Foolish perhaps, but I did tell some friends what was going on. I couldn't stop talking about him. They can't keep secrets. And I bet you those friends let justified her actions. Around that time, I said to Nick, when I see you, it's like when I was at boarding school, my parents came to visit. It was that special recognition when I see your face. Validation, gentlemen. Attention and validation. He replied, you're in love with me, aren't you? And then he said, I know, if we, feel still, if we still feel like this in two years, I'll divorce my wife and you'll divorce Tom and we'll get married. I was flippant and silly and obviously, and obviously untrue and would never have worked. He would have behaved with me as he did with his wife. Right. This guy is in marriage material. This guy would end up cheating on her with other women. But that'd be, that'd be karma. She would deserve that, to be honest. Nick was, without a doubt, a serial seducer. Good for an affair, but not marriage material. See, she knows. Did I feel guilty? Right from the start. I have a good marriage. A husband who has always treated me wonderfully for the 27 years since I met him. She doesn't feel guilty. And even if, even if she did, it doesn't matter. She keeps doing this. Now she's trying to, you know, kind of cover her tracks here from getting, like, bombarded with comments in this, this article from people basically calling her out for what she is. She says, um, I was 46 back then when she got married. He was 35. And the truth is, I was getting a bit desperate. I never married or even lived with anyone. I'd had plenty of relationships, mostly lasting months rather than years, with only one I would call serious. So let's go back here. She said she was getting a bit desperate at 46. Ah, and she never had any serious relationships. Aha, uh -huh. so she was used to having fun. But at 46 years old, oh shit, I don't want to go through life never being married. I'm going to go find myself a nice guy. I'm going to find myself a nice guy to settle down with. That way then I can have a ring on my finger, not feel like a loser because society will judge me if I don't have a ring on my finger. And okay, you know, I'll get myself a marriage material nice guy who's going to treat me like the queen and there you go and as i've told you guys before they settle okay don't think that for guys like i tell you before if your whole life growing up junior high high school college 20s women generally don't pay a whole lot of attention to you not too much but you get to your 30s and all of a sudden the ones that weren't giving you the time of day all of a sudden are that's because the clock's ticking that's because they need a guy that's bearish material to marry a sure thing and a lot of guys think like, yeah, I got her. I finally got one. They now like me now that I'm older. No, no, you've been changed. Your marriage material. That's why they picked you. And you're never going to be treated the same or in any way, shape, or form or looked at the same or f the same like the guy they really wanted. I know I'm harsh. I know I'm negative. But I'm being honest. It is what it is. It's the ugly truth. Anyhow... She says, it was too late for children, but I didn't. that didn't trouble me. I love children, and in the years, I worked as a speech therapist before I went to art school in my 40s and became a potter. I hugely enjoyed working and helping young people. I'm close to my friend's children. Tom wasn't necessarily what the doctor ordered. He's not particularly educated, and he's rather short, though good-looking. Slowly, though, I realized he was creative, considerate, honest, and that, that our love kept growing. She settled. Companionship... Uh, companionship, acceptance, kindness. That's what I had with Tom. Maybe there wasn't a great deal of passion, ding, 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 but I had that with other boyfriends I'd had over the years before I met him. See? The other guy, the other bad boys, that's where she had the passion, but she wanted to settle. And she settled for the guy, the nice guy, that there, you know, it wasn't a whole lot of pa passion, but there was kindness and companionship. See what I mean? Because she knew those other guys aren't going to settle. They're not going to be the marriage material types. Otherwise, she would have been with one of them. It says, I suppose the affair with Nick takes me back to the passion I felt when I was young. I once asked Tom, how would you feel if I had an affair? When they ask you questions like that, that means they're, they're going to have it or it's going through their heads. The guy said, listen to this. And the guy said, I'd leave, he replied. I'm quite aware that I've been playing with fire. I would be devastated if Tom left me. Man, talk about selfish. Well, Tom, her husband, has every right to leave her. And guess what? 
what would happen? The waterworks, the I'm sorry's, all that. And the nice guy typically would just hear all that and be like, okay, and would stay, even though she did all that. Right? The carousel keeps on going, guys. A lot of my friends were doing grandparent duty and posting pictures and talking about grandchildren all the time on Facebook. Maybe if I had children and grandchildren my own, that I wouldn't be behaving so badly. Oh, okay. There was definitely this need to regain my younger self. The younger woman who had passionate affairs. And maybe part of me thinks it's my last chance. You're not really supposed to get to 70 and still be a you-know-what being unless it's with your husband. The few friends I've told know Tom and are fond of him and basically would prefer me not to talk about it. Yeah, because it makes him feel awkward as hell. You know, they're friends with her and they're friends with the husband and they know about this. But you see how she's writing this to justify it and, and you know, she's an asshole. Let's be honest here. I think it disturbs the married ones and the single women who are looking for a man to be envious. One cut me off completely. She said, you want to have your cake and eat it too. Well, good for that person for cutting her off. I have told my friends it's over now, which is which it almost is, so they can clear their own consciences and don't have to feel that way, have been made to collude, collude in any, anymore. But what is true, and I can hardly believe I'm saying this, is that I think I've enjoyed You Know What in my 70s with Nick more than any other time in my life. Because this guy knows how to push her buttons in the right way. That's why. And she's supposedly for 25 years has been loyal and not, nothing happened and all that. And curious the thing is that my real... And, and the curious thing is that my relations with Tom are starting to become more intimate again. Something in me has been, been awakened that is starting to reflect positivity within my marriage. No, she realizes I better start doing things right, otherwise I could lose this guy. He's always going to figure this shit out. A lot of women of my age have given up on you-know-what, but I've always enjoyed it. I suppose I still have a degree of S-word confidence. It helps that I manage to maintain my weight and stay slim. I have lots of thick hair, but it's salt and pepperish with lots of dark hair remaining, so I don't bother to dye it. And I'm thinking about my non-surgical facelift. I've always taken pride in my appearance, but the affair reminded me that I'm still attractive and I st that I enjoy making the effort to look good. Granny on the carousel. I would hate to give the impression there's anything wrong or lacking in my husband. This is about me. I've always had a naughty streak. Ding, ding. I like intrigue and secrets, though I'm not so good at keeping them. Well, no shit. She's telling all her friends about all this. I gotta wonder, honestly, she was hoping that the, guy, the husband would find out through the friends, and that way she had an excuse to end it and go off with the other guy. And, of course, the other guy would pretty much do the same thing to her they did with his other wives. Uh, Apple Tree Yard, which was about an affair, was one of my favorite books of recent years, and I love the BBC adaptation with Emily Watson. See? See about the books? The books and the movies that they watch and then they want to have that happen in their lives? I wasn't kidding. I would say those first six months of the affair were a, he a heady mix of bliss and pain, which is what one most expected from an extramarital affair. Nick is neither empathetic nor kind, the opposite of Tom. In fact, and maybe that is part of the attraction. And I know he sees other women because he tells me, but he got under my skin and it was aching to an obsession. That guy had a, a lifetime to master the seduction process, and I guarantee you she's not the first married woman that he was trying to, you know, seduce and have affairs with. I would like this affair to end and become a friendship rather than be the on-again, off-again thing is involved too. But I admit, I keep getting drawn back in. A friendship, my ass. Uh-uh. The whole just be friends thing, he'd be after her, trying to get her to keep breaking this friendship thing. It's not going to go away. She needs to cut this guy off. Well, okay, let me rephrase this. She should honestly leave her husband because this guy doesn't deserve this. But at the very least, if she's not, cut this thing off completely with this guy. But she'll miss the attention, the adventure, the excitement. So this will probably continue. During the first lockdown, I did manage to break it off. Ours was never going to be a Zoom relationship. But just prior to the second lockdown, we got back together. Imagine that. Nick had been texting and emailing to say he missed me. I felt the same and I weakened. The thing is, I've got a full, I got a full life. A good husband, good friends, and my work as, as a potter is hugely important to me. I wouldn't ever do it this again. Bullshit. I might develop a flirty relationship with a man. Perhaps that's something we could all do with. But I would not start another affair. Sure, lady. 
I suppose I vacillate between celebrating and regretting my actions, but ultimately, I would firmly come down to on the side of celebration. A guilty secret, perhaps, but one I treasure. See, she's not sorry. She's figuring, hey, I'm 70. I'm at the end of my life. I deserve this after 25 years of being the good wife and all that. But again, remember how she said prior to this husband of hers in her 40s, well, her whole life, she was obviously dating a lot of guys that didn't go anywhere with. Translation, the bad boys. But 46, holy shit, I'm in my 40s. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be unwed. I want to be the old maid. So she found a nice guy, which was no problem because it sounds like, it sounds like obviously for her age at 70, for her age, she's good looking. So obviously when she was younger, she was good looking, probably above average in her 40s. So she had no problem roping a nice guy. And look what happened, right? But anyhow, guys, I thought it'd be an interesting article. Somebody sent this to me. I apologize. I forget who sent it to me, but you know who you are. But it's entertaining and interesting that the carousel never never stops spinning, okay? So for you guys that are in relationships, marriages, you got to be on the lookout. you got to watch your lady and watch out for these uh, 60 something older Chad and Tyrones. They don't stop. But anyhow, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.